Hey everybody, Hunter back again from Showtime Studios. Uh, another installment on the, um, what are we calling this thing? The build tutorial, that's what we're calling it. Uh, as you can see, we have the chassis here that we painted the other day uh, on video. And I actually made a mistake in uploading some videos. Uh, usually when I upload a video, I go ahead and delete that one out of the file. And I ended up deleting the video where I went in and done some um, detail work to the chassis. So, unfortunately, once, you know, it's done, I can't go back and redo it to show you what all we done. Uh, but it's very simple, basic stuff. Uh, we did go in with the Tamaya panel line uh, accent color. And I use the gray on a lot of the connection points for like the four link bars and like where the battery box sets up against the uh, frame rails, where the cross members go against the frame rails, uh, the front suspension, stuff like that. And then after we got that down, we went in and did uh, Vallejo black uh, with a 10 brush on the airbags front and back. And I also went in and used some Vallejo red on, decided to do the shocks red just to give it a, uh, a touch of um, color. And you can see them there showing up in red. And you can see the black airbags back in there and also at the rear end. And what else did we do? Uh, we did the drive shaft in chrome silver from Testers. That's an enamel. Uh, believe it or not, me with an enamel. And I went ahead and glued the engine in now. Uh, the engine is in the chassis for good. And as you can see, we had the drive shaft hook to it. Um, so all that stuff is done. The headers are on. We have to do the exhaust. So that'll be coming up. Uh, we'll do that on video. And I'll show you some of the heat staining technique that I do. So I did go in and use a product that I'm not a real big fan of. But I do use it on certain things. If you notice on the upper intake tubes here and also right above the uh, cam covers, it's pretty shiny. Um, and what I used on that, let me see if we can get it to zoom in here a little bit. What I used on that is the Molotov Chrome uh, pins. Well, actually, it's not a pin. It is this product right here. It is the refill, the 30 milliliter uh, refill, liquid chrome from Molotov. And I've tried this uh, through the airbrush. That's originally what I bought it for. And to tell you the truth, I'm not a real big fan of it. A lot of guys out there swear by it. They say it works uh, way better than Alclad or Spastics or anything like that. Uh, all my tests I've done with it so far. Um, and on my particular builds, as far as spraying it, it doesn't hold a candle to spastics uh, or properly applied alclad. But I have found that it does have some very, uh, you can use it for a lot of little things and it looks very good as long as you don't touch it. Uh, this is actually an ink. This is not a paint. So it takes a long time for this to dry. But what we did is I put a little bit of that on one of the little cards, uh, the little pieces of plastic that we were doing the, uh, we were painting something, I forget what it was, and I had those little uh, pieces of plastic out here, and I had two drops of paint, uh, two colors on it, and I can't remember what it was now, but uh, that's what I used, and I put some of the um, this chrome out of the refill here onto that card, and I took a 10-0 uh, brush and just went in, and instead of brushing it, I actually just kind of dab it into place and it keeps the um, real shiny appearance um, pretty much of chrome. Uh, more polished aluminum than chrome, but I'd used it on that and also used it on this uh, little air pump down here for the hydraulic or for the uh, airbag suspension. I used it on that and we'll flip the chassis over here and let you get a view of the underneath of it. And that blended in real well, real happy with that. Uh, you can see the headers there with the heat staining on them. We detailed the front suspension a little bit. And the other thing that I used that Molotov uh, chrome on is right there on the center part of the rack. Uh, that usually it's a polished tube that's in the center of the rack. So I went ahead and simulated that on this. 
I uh, also went in and used a little bit of Vallejo and some of the black uh, panel line accent to do the boots on the rack. And I still need to go in and do the tie rod ends. I'm going to paint them in a more like an aluminum color or a steel color uh, just to give a little bit more added color to the chassis. But other than that, it is uh, the chassis is assembled and looks pretty good. Now, the one thing that I did do with this is after I got all of my detail painting done and all of the uh, panel line accent color and everything in, I went in and shot a, a very light coat of uh, Tamiya TS-79 semi-gloss clear over everything. And not the engine or the drive shaft, but all the main chassis that we had assembled. I went ahead and shot the uh, semi-gloss clear on it, and it came out real good. So... As far as the chassis itself, all we really have left to do is the exhaust and we have to put the radiator hoses in and also the radiator with the electric fans. And then the chassis will be done. We'll slip the brake rotors on with the calipers and come to think of it, that's what we were doing on that little plastic card when we were working on the uh, brake calipers and the rotors. We had silver on a uh, dot of silver and a dot of red. That's what it was. That's what I put this Molotov chrome on. Uh, did it the same way. And let's see. Yeah, once we get the exhaust on and the radiator and the electric fans and two radiator hoses, the chassis will be complete. Hang the uh, rotors and the calipers on. We'll put the wheels and tires on that we've already done. Uh, they're finished up, ready to go on the model. So that'll have us a complete rolling chassis, or in this case, a static chassis, because if you remember, I don't like uh, models that roll around. So um, we've got all that done so far. I guess the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to set the chassis over here to the side. And I have the radiator and fan assembly on a toothpick here. And I've got some semi-gloss black from Tamaya in the um, Grex airbrush. So we're going to go ahead and spray this down. And I'm going to put it on very lightly so it shouldn't take very long to dry. And then I'm going to show you a dry brushing technique that I use uh, that will help pop out the detail on this. So let me get the airbrush and we'll get the spraying on this uh, radiator. Okay, I have the, um, of course, this is the Grex Tritium Series airbrush. Got a little bit of semi-gloss black in it uh, straight out of the bottle from Tamaya. And we're going to spray this little radiator assembly down with it. I have the paint flow turned way down, and actually the pressure is down a pretty good ways. Um, as you can see, I don't have a whole lot coming out. That way I don't have a whole bunch of overspray, you know, going around in here. Usually I do this at the booth, but um, it's easier to be, you know, up close and let you all see what I'm doing here at the uh, workbench. So we're just going to go ahead and put a uh, light coat of the semi-gloss black down on this. And I have went in and sanded all the seams and the mold lines and all that stuff out of this. This is a two-part assembly um, in this particular kit. So you have a seam that actually goes right down through the middle here and all the way around. So I went back in and cleaned all that up once the uh, glue dried. And I was real happy with all that. It came out real nice. Like I say, I'm just going in and putting a very light coat on this. I want it to dry real quick, which uh, to my acrylics tend to do that. So that's a good thing. And if I was over at the spray booth, this would already be painted by now uh, because I have the, uh, the paint flow turned up a little bit more. But like I say, I'm trying to limit my overspray since I'm sitting here at the workbench and in this little detail and stuff I mean uh, if you're using an airbrush you know make sure that you kind of twist in the part and get back in all the little cracks and crevices and nooks and crannies and all that stuff and if you're using a spray can it's a little bit more difficult you have to um, be very careful that you don't get any runs in it but you can do this with a spray can. This part you can do with a spray can. The next part we're going to do, you can't do with a spray can. But you can do it with a brush. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and paint the underneath here, get that wrapped up. And we will have the radiator and electric fan assembly. 
which are pretty decent. And again, that may seem like I'm putting a lot of paint on here because I've been spraying for a while. Um, I have very little bit of paint coming out of the airbrush. See, I can go over here and it takes that long to create a dot. So I don't have a whole lot of overspray. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And, you know, for the most part, that's pretty much dry right now. We'll hang the airbrush back over here. And the next step that we're going to do with this, I'll hold it up here so everybody see what we were we were working on. I don't know if the camera will zoom in on this. Well, that's not too bad. There's the electric fans. And as you can see, I mean, everything is all the same sheen, uh, all the same color, front and back. So now we're going to change that a little bit. And we're going to make those electric fans pop out. And also some of the, um, the other detail, there's actually... They have the radiator uh, little squares in there, like the mesh for the uh, radiator. And you also have the louvers in there for the uh, air intake. This is a Corvette air intake on this. And that's actually where the air cleaner sits, is in that box right there. So what we're going to use on this, now that is the, um, uh, the semi-gloss black, and that's X18 from Tamaya. That's an acrylic. But what I'm going to be using for the dry brush technique is, let me turn around here the right way. This is a uh, dark gray from Floquil, and this is an enamel color. And I've already shaken this up pretty good. I'm going to give it one more shake here. And then we'll go in and show you another little detail trick that I use. And usually when I shake the bottle, of course, you're going to have a little bit of paint in the lid of it there. And that's what I like to use is that little bit of paint that's in the lid. That way I'm not dipping into the bottle and it makes this step a whole lot um, easier to do. Now, for any of the beginners out there or the intermediate guys that don't know what dry brushing is, uh, I do have a video on that back in the archives. But what, what we're going to do here next is called dry brushing. So the little bit of paint that we have here in the lid. And I may have to uh, actually go in the bottle before we're done here and uh, get a little bit more. But we'll see how the first uh, layer works. And if it does, I'll show you another little trick to keep from dipping uh, the brush in the bottle. So we just went ahead and loaded the brush up with what was in this cap. And now I'll come over here on my shop tail. And all I'm doing is just kind of wiping off a lot of the excess not with a lot of pressure. You want to leave a little bit of paint on the brush. And then what you're going to do is just kind of come in and very lightly run the brush over the high points of your detail. And what that will do is it kind of highlights the edges and it makes everything, the detail really show up. And look a whole lot better and I'm gonna go ahead and do like just the electric fans right now and then we'll hold it up here and let you get a, a view of uh, what we did because I'm sure it's a little hard to see and again this is very subtle uh, this is a dark gray and we're putting this over flat or uh, semi-gloss black so it's not gonna be real stark and in your face it's gonna be very subtle especially when everything dries up. Um, we'll hold it up here again. And we'll spin it around here the right way. Now, if you remember when I held it up the first time, remember how all that blended in? Uh, now you can start to see that stuff pop out. And we're not trying to totally coat in the surface. We're just dragging the brush across the high points of the surface. And now I'm going to move on to like the edges of the... Um, fan shroud that goes on the radiator and then we will also do the edges of the radiator so basically what we're doing is we're going to dry brush all of the edges of the part that we just sprayed semi-gloss black and I'm starting to run out of paint so one little trick I was, I was going to show you here is you can put the cap back on when you're doing this technique because the one thing that you don't want to do is get too much paint in this brush 
If you start getting paint that wicks all the way up here to the ferrule or the brush, that's way too much. And even though you get most of it out on the cloth, it's still going to be too heavy to do dry brushing. So you want just a very little bit, bit of paint on the ends of the bristles when you're doing this. So if you run out, just put the cap back on the bottle and shake the bottle up again. Take the cap back off, set it down, and then the amount of paint that you have here in this cap will do your next session. And probably that'll be enough to do the rest of this radiator. So we're going to do the same procedure. We're going to come over here. We're going to wipe off both sides of the brush. You notice I flip it over. And you're just looking for a pretty light trail. About like this right here. And then you just come back in. And very lightly touch it. Now another little trick to this. If you just lightly touch it. And you think it's putting down too much. And you're not. You think it'll be too bold. Come back over here to your cloth. Wipe off a little bit more. And then go back and try it again. But be very light with the touch on this. Um, because you're not trying to put a ridiculous amount of paint down. You're just trying to highlight things. And you're not trying to change the, um, the color of the whole component. Like right now I'm coming across the, um, the simulated uh, radiator fins. And I'm just lightly dragging the brush across that and dragging the corners and we're going to go back in here and use up a little bit more of what's in the cap and that should finish this piece off and if you do load the brush a little heavy you know once you get the hang of this technique you can vary the pressure that you're putting on the brush in different areas on how much you actually want to put on or how little but if you're a beginner and you're just trying this for the first time, you know, practice this on something that's not going on your model. And that'll give you a little bit of experience and, and you'll know what to look for um, as you're doing the actual model. And yes, this is an enamel and people, some people say you can't put an enamel over top of a uh, acrylic. Uh, if you're dry brushing, you're not going to have an issue with it because there's not enough um, solvents in the paint to affect the acrylic. Now, if you was brushing this enamel uh, in a full coat over top of the acrylic, you would most likely lift it or have a reaction with it. But just dry brushing technique, you're not going to have that problem. Or let me rephrase that and say you should not have that problem. But if you put it on too heavy, you could have a reaction. Now you can use, you know, a water base. You can use any type of acrylic to do this. Um, I like the enamels and I also like um, the some of the Tamaya uh, bottle colors for dry brushing. Like when I'm doing a weathered subject or something like that, I'll use like the buff or the wooden deck tan from Tamaya and dry brush with that. It comes out very well. Okay, so that's all there is to doing that part. I'm going to put the cap back on the bottle here and I need to clean my brush up real quick and then we'll hold this up and I'll show you how it came out. And I keep a bottle of this brush cleaner here that's if you look down in that bottle, it's pretty nasty looking, um, and I keep one that's totally clean. And the one that's clean is for, like, getting the uh, extra accent color, the panel line accent color off, or cleaning up from, you know, dry brushing or weathering or something like that. And then this bottle with all the junk in it is what I use to clean brushes and stuff out. And as far as the brush, uh, that's another thing I've probably should mention here for the beginners uh, that haven't done dry brushing. This is uh, about three sixteenths of an inch wide. You can go to the wider dry, um, brushes to do uh, dry brushing. Uh, this one here is a little wider. This is also a dry brushing brush that I use. And you can even go up to something this size. Uh, but when you start getting up into something this big, 
you have to be doing a bigger part because this will, even though you're wiping it off on the towel, it's going to put a lot of paint down on the surface. So try to, um, you know, starting out, try to go with something like maybe an eighth inch or a three sixteenths. And this is a flat brush and it has a straight cut end on it. You don't want to use a round brush or anything like that for dry brushing because you just want to lightly run this over the surface and you don't want the point or anything to go down into any, you know, any of your details because it's going to mess it up. So that's that. And we'll put the cap back on the thinner here. And I'll hold this radiator up and I'll show you how the dry brushing technique came out. And as you can see, it's very subtle. All the way around, we have it on top there. Uh, we also did the front side of it around the sides. So that's what it came out like. And like I say, all this is pretty much dry. This stuff dries up in no time. So we're going to bring the chassis back over here. And we still have to do the radiator hoses yet. Uh, they're just two simple radiator hoses that come off of this uh, upper where you see these red silicone hoses. Uh, it comes off of that part there. And as you remember, we did a little bit of spacing uh, to make this radiator fit in here. And the finished product with the radiator into place looks like that right there. And, of course, we did all the dry brushing on the back of the radiator there on the fans and the angle that the radiator's at. You really can't see it, but that's a good thing to uh, do some practice on because on the finished model, if you got it a little heavier or whatever, you don't have to strip it and redo it. You can just put it into place, and really nobody's ever going to see that. So... That, for the most part, wraps up the chassis. I'm going to get this. I've got to do the radiator hoses, get them glued to the engine, and they'll come out here and hang in the midair, and then we'll put the, uh, we'll assemble the uh, radiator and glue it to the chassis and to the radiator hoses. And other than the brakes and the wheels and tires, the chassis is now complete. So that's what that part looks like. And next up, we're going to be working on the lower part of the body i've already come up with a paint scheme for this um, i hope it's going to work i talked to sandy about it and she's a little hesitant on doing multicolors, but i think once we get it all done it should look pretty good and if not i'll have to come up with something else because we're going to be doing it on camera so it's uh it's one of the things that's going to be permanent i think but i think it'll look pretty good so we're going to also do some wood graining on the body. Uh, I have a video coming up on the prep work that we've done on the body. And then we'll have another video that uh, prep work for the hood itself. And also the video coming up on the lower chassis or the lower body. And we're going to be doing all this underneath the here in the semi-gloss black. We'll probably spray that right here at the workbench. Uh, same technique we just used on the radiator. I think that'll, make, that'll look real good with the, uh, the racing white frame rails. Of having this just semi-gloss black simple and probably a little bit of uh, wood graining in here because they did add detail underneath uh, the wood graining and the little metal strips and they have that same thing on the top side so even though we're not going to pick this model up a lot we'll probably go in and just do a little bit of uh, wood graining in here with the semi-gloss black should look pretty good so stay tuned for that uh, like always, I want to thank everybody for watching and the support on the um, series so far. I also like to give a shout out to uh, Matthew Cunningham at MC Garage for uh, his nice words in his video that he put up um, in reference to one of my videos in this series. So thanks for that, Matt. And uh, your video was very true. He was uh, speaking on the, um, the subject of... Uh, the basics and perfecting your basics before you start adding a bunch of aftermarket and stuff like that. And that's something that I stress a lot and he backed me up on that. So, uh, that's a uh, good information. Um, it, you can build a box stock model and do very well at the shows, or you can build a box stock model and do a lot of these little detailed tricks that we're doing and not have to add anything to it and still have a good model to put on your own shelf. So that's all we've got for this one. Like always, I thank you for watching and 
We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.